All right, now that you're stuck at home, how many appliances are you discovering <laughs> that you don't actually use? use? Uh... And are you starting to use them? Right? I mean, no time like the present. <laughs> to figure everything out. You're either using it or you're not. And now is the time that you've always said, well, you know, those special occasions when I need it, I'll use it. Have you really? Now that I have more time or when I have more time, I'll use that waffle maker. Mm -hmm. Have you been using it? Because we've all been at home a whole <laughs> lot lately. And if you haven't used it, it's time to have a little discussion with yourself. All right. Well, the good news is you are about to save thousands of dollars and thousands of calories because you can't go out to dinner mm -mm. and you can't i mean you can still go through the drive through but you don't need to because you're not out of the house and you're not running around like a crazy person because your schedule is empty yeah so yeah. yay saving money saving calories <laughs> <laughs> and so dust yeah. off those pots and pans Open up that cupboard. It's got cobwebs all in it because you haven't used your, your utensils in how long? Except for to reheat last night's takeout. Uh -huh. Yeah. And it's so funny. I always, about two-thirds of the way through any season, I tell people, okay, if you haven't worn, you know, if we're two-thirds of the way through, through winter and you haven't worn half of what's in your closet, it's time to get rid of it. Because we've gone through the coldest snap, the hardest winter, all the snow, all the slush, all the yucky stuff. And if you haven't worn anything in your closet, it's time to get rid of it. Because if you haven't worn it by now, you won't wear it. Mm -hmm. What we typically don't, and, and t unless it's the holiday season, we typically don't have seasons in our kitchen. Right. But having come just through all this COVID stuff, <laughs> okay, this was a huge season in our closet. We either used it. Or we didn't and now that we've coasted through a lot of the initial COVID stuff and we're dealing with a new a new sense of normal what are we using and what are we not using in our kitchen and what is it time to get rid of yeah I mean really think about it the only time you really discover some of these things is like when you move <laughs> And oh, you're like, I had that. I had, I remember one time I had a quesadilla maker. <laughs> Tell me why you know. need a separate appliance to make a quesadilla. It, I mean, <laughs> a microwave or toaster oven does just fine. You yep. just melt the cheese and fold it in half. Yep. But it was a special and it, and it like cut the little triangles for wow, you and everything. That's a special it was pretty thing. fancy. But you know, when I've moved, I was like, yeah. I don't feel like packing that around anymore mm -hmm. and so now is a great time to get rid of your quesadilla maker and start using the pots and pans and the stove for its intended use which was to cook actual meals <laughs> and that rice cooker that your sister gave you because she uses a rice cooker all the time because it has a timer on it so when she's gone to work her rice is cooking well but you usually just cook the rice while you're making the rest of your meal so the rice cooker that your sister gave you that you never, ever, 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 ever use, it's probably a good time to reassess the value of that rice cooker in your home. I'm telling you, a lot of people are like freaking out over this. And yeah. one thing I have to say is I cook every day. I've always cooked every day. Yep. Um, I enjoy cooking, so I should say that. Some people don't enjoy it. I don't. But I also I have very strict... Uh, macronutrient guidelines and an eating plan that I try to stay within. But here's the thing. I cook every day. I don't meal prep. I stay within my macro guidelines 90% of the time. I'm not perfect. And my family eats it with very few complaints and we don't get bored. So yeah. a lot of people have these misconceptions about if I'm going to eat healthy, I have to eat, eat the same thing every day and I have to meal prep 15 plastic containers all at once and spend three hours on Sunday doing it. Or they think if I, if I'm going to stick to my meal plan, then my family has to have a separate meal. Not mm -hmm. true. Or mm -hmm. they think I'm going to be bored because I'm eating the same thing every day. <laughs> or I, you know, my kids won't like it. There's all these different things. And I'm telling you, not one of them applies. Uh -oh. Not a single one. Not a single one. You don't have to meal prep. You don't have to live on just boring 
blah. We're not doing rice cakes and kale 24-7. No, no, or chicken and broccoli. No. Ugh. No. I'm telling you, you need three things in your meal. Three things. You need a protein. Doesn't have to be meat. Can be tofu or something like that. You need vegetables. I know. Uh-huh. Vegetables. Do you know what vegetables are? Because some people apparently don't. I'm finding oh this out. Word. Grown adults that won't eat uh, vegetables. I told my kids the other day when I, my, my children were crying, literally crying <laughs> because they had each eaten something with carbs, you know, uh -huh. so it was, they had toast or they had a bagel or they had cereal. And when they went to get more food and they just rotated, like the one who had cereal wanted a bagel. I'm like, no, <laughs> you need something else. And they cried because I wasn't letting them eat more bread. Um, you are the worst mother. I said, look, it, you can eat vegetables all day long and I would never, <laughs> ever, ever stop you. <laughs> so we went through the, the fridge and I showed them, this is where the vegetables are. If you <laughs> this are, is called a carrot. this is a carrot, <laughs> this is broccoli, this is celery, this is a pepper. <laughs> this is, I mean, I went through and I showed them where it was in the fridge. And I said, if you are hungry, you can eat any of these all day long and I will not stop you. <laughs> and they thought I was pretty, they were literally like jaw drop on the floor. They were actually silent. I love it. Really, mom? Yep, really. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and they, they didn't say, okay, they didn't say, all right. None of them grabbed a vegetable either, but they didn't ask for any more food either. So, so funny. <laughs> anyway. So yes, vegetables. <laughs> You need them in your okay, life. Protein, protein vegetables, vegetable, and some kind of seasoning, broth, sauce, something. It can be as simple as some garlic powder and onion, salt, and pepper. Awesome. It can be super complicated with all kinds of oils and vinegars and sherry and... Well, and that's you how you get, get your healthy fats. Right. right. Yeah. You can do any level of um, difficulty with that, but you need those three components to make a good meal. And you need one pan Delicious. or a crock pot. Yeah. Put it all together. Turn it on. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's so hard. It's so hard. I know Martha Stewart is probably like, oh, how dare you? And Rachel Ray is like, no. <laughs> and they are very talented and they can make amazing things look very simple. But I don't know about you. The last time I tried to do a Rachel Ray 30 minute recipe, it took me at least an hour. <laughs> It uh, usually takes me about two, so. <laughs> and they're great. They're delicious. And once you get better at it, and if you have a whole staff in the back prepping and chopping for you, it does take 30 minutes. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, and they're great ideas. But really, at the end of the day, you can take a pretty inexpensive chunk of meat, like a, a pork shoulder or something, and some vegetables and some broth and seasoning and throw it in a crock pot all day, and it will be delicious. I promise you. So it doesn't have to be complicated. It can be fun. It can be easy or hard. And you can involve your family in it. So while we are being forced to do what our ancestors did, which is to stay home and cook meals and eat together. Poor us. Woe is Life us. is hard. <laughs> oh my God. I just want sushi tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Chicken it is. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know. You can do takeout and you can do all these fun things, but they take a lot more energy and they take a lot more money. Yeah. So you're already home. You've got the appliances, dust them off and use them. And go from there. Now there's <laughs> something to be said about following a routine in the kitchen. Yes. Um, this is going to be one of those things that you hear from us over and over again is following a routine, following something that works. And once you find something in a kitchen that works, Set yourself up for success and find the appliances that are going to help you stick to that routine. So if that means you need that rice cooker that you can program so that your food is done by the time you get home, if you need that crock pot that it can mm -hmm. cook all day, if you need the pressure pot, whatever you need to stick to the routine that helps you in the energy, in the space that you need, do it. Stick to it. And if you bought something... I bought something totally against my better judgment, considering who I am and the process that I go through to curate my own house. I bought a pressure cooker. Um, and I thought it was going to save my life. 
<laughs> that everything was going to get done in this pressure cooker and that the Instapot would, you know, help me lose weight and it would help me feed my family before <laughs> well, 9 o'clock That's what everybody night. on Instagram says. Right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> in the last year and a half that I have had my Instapot, I have used it four times. That's so funny because in a year and a half. The things that I live in my rice cooker. Uh -huh. I live in my Instapot. Yeah. And I live in my crock pot. And the Instapot, I actually was reluctant to buy and didn't buy it. I got given it. But <laughs> everyone was like, why don't you have one? They're so amazing. I was like, it's a crock pot that goes faster. I use a crock pot because I don't <laughs> need to go faster. I actually need it to go longer because I don't have time to like hurry and throw dinner together. Uh -huh. I need it like to cook all day. Right. And, but I will say the Instapot has been amazing for things like hard boiled eggs and shredded chicken. Mm -hmm. And for the days when my crock pot meal that I had planned didn't make it didn't into the crock through. pot <laughs> until like four o'clock. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, oh, suck. But <laughs> the Instapot can do what the crock pot does, but faster. So when you procrastinate, you don't do what you planned ahead to do. Then it's amazing. <laughs> it's phenomenal. <laughs> And the rice cooker, oh. I I don't have time to babysit the rice, mm -hmm. so I just plug mm -hmm. and go, and it cooks, and then I don't burn it. Yeah. But case in point for one of the other episodes that we've already done mm -hmm. about not listening to what other people say yes. or what Instagram says or what, yes. like, you cater your house to what you do, to what you use, yes. and to what you need, because chances are our kitchens are very different. Probably. Even though we're both cooking from scratch every single day. COVID-19 or not, <laughs> we're both doing this, but our kitchens probably look very different because our systems and our routine mm -hmm. and what works for us right. looks very, very different. Now, I will say this. Of all of the places in your house that you are going to spend money on organizing bins, this is where you're going to spend money. And this is where you want to spend money on containers, dividers, and bins because this is what's going to put limits on you and your family within a space. A kitchen mm. is a very high traffic area. Yeah. You are constantly rotating things in and out. And if you don't have a space, a defined space to put things and a defined space to how much or how little, yeah. then you're going to be a mess and all over the place. Now, I am not... Um, I'm not saying that everything has to have a bin in a container. Um, a lot of things in my house don't. I don't have drawer dividers for my little drawers next to my stove. <gasps> because it's a little drawer and it just everything that I use for cooking just goes in the drawer. So I don't have a drawer divider because that's all but I need. How do you know where, where the spoon and the spatula go? You don't have a <laughs> spoon and a spatula slot. <laughs> you don't divide it. But I do have, uh, on the other side of my kitchen, I have a big long drawer that I need more things in there because that prep space right there, I do more things in it. So I have my sharp knives because my cutting boards are in the cupboard right under it. I have my serving utensils because all of my serving bowls are in the cupboard above it. And I have like the weird odd things that you need, like a can opener because I open stuff over the sink and it's right there next to my sink. So it, it's defining my space and not jumbling everything all together. But if you're going to decant things, so take it out of this, the whatever package it came in at the store and store it in your own thing. So that, that's called decanting. If you decant it. I've only ever heard of that with wine. I, didn't, I know. I didn't so know funny. that was it's, like a thing. That's why, I, and that's why I explained it. Mm. Because usually we think of, you know, <laughs> liquor when we think of decanting. But it just means taking it out of the package that you purchased it in and put Learn it so something new if you day. do that with um you know flowers rice right. pastas um kids cereals anything like that then you're gonna want um you know storage bins and containers that are actually gonna work if you tell your kids you can only have this much you know i am only going to fill up this bin once a week mm -hmm. so go to costco and buy bulk but i'm only putting in five a week because that's all that fits in this little bin. And that's mm -hmm. all you get. So if you eat five today, you don't get any for the rest of the week. If you eat one every day, then there you go. So, yeah. but it's, it's giving things a home so that when you ask your kids to unload the dishwasher, it actually happens. And you're not hunting for three hours for something because you don't know where the kids put it. <laughs> 
because you actually worst. have a defined space where it goes. So if you're going to spend money on a system in your kitchen or any anywhere in your house, it's going to be in the kitchen because that's where you're going to need it the most. That's where it's going to affect you the most. And that's where you're going to get the most benefit from spending the money. So, so you can take attention. the money that you save by actually cooking meals mm -hmm. and go spend it on some bins. Mm -hmm. And then you have an activity and a meal. Yep. <laughs> Done. And then go find a friend before you buy something. Go find a friend who doesn't use their crock pot or who doesn't use their rice yeah, maker and say, hey, can I borrow this for a while just to see if yeah. this is going to work for me? Because I guarantee that in your circle of, if you talk to 10 people, there you're going to find somebody who has it that doesn't use it. And then even if you love it, you could say, hey, you know what? I love this. You don't use it except for twice a year. Would you mind if we did a swap? Yeah, that's like, a good idea. Like, I can keep it, and if you need it, just come borrow it from me. That way it's out of your kitchen, but I have the benefit of using it without buying Or can I just buy it from you, you right. know, for 10 bucks instead of 30 bucks brand new right. in the store? So kitchens can be a lot of fun to organize and to think about if you're willing to organize it for you. Yeah. And to get real with yourself that just because the entire world went crazy, like, <laughs> I feel like Instapots were the next Tickle Me Elmo. <laughs> you know, like yeah. everybody had to have it and yes. everybody was killing yes. each other at, you know, Black Friday sales. Which is why I didn't want one because right. I was like, I, I don't like to be with the herd. Uh -huh. I like to go my so own way. So don't go with the herd. Do your own thing. And if you change the system of how you eat, then see if somebody can lend you mm -hmm. a, a blender or something like that that can do all of the things. Now, the last thing I want to say about kitchens is find something that can multitask mm, yes. so find a bosch that has all the attachments right. so that you have the mixer and the blender and the shredder and everything else all in one that's amazing so advice. that you can do it yes. instead of just having a blender get an emulsion blender so that you can blend up soups and salsas while they're cooking you can also move the attachment to be a whisk you can also use the attachment as a food processor so get something that is going to multitask for you in a kitchen so that as you are multitasking, you only have to use one appliance instead of 15. It's going to take yes. up a whole lot of, a whole lot less space in your cupboards. And if you go ahead and buy a bin for all the attachments, they're not scattered everywhere. They're right yes. there. Here's the main part. Here's all the attachments. It's in one place instead of 15 things all over. I love it. I didn't even know that was a thing. Oh, it's absolutely. I have a I have a thing. blender and an emulsion blender and a food processor, and they all take up a lot of space. Mm -hmm. I would way rather mm -hmm. have one all in one. So yeah, you can go find those Boshes that have the attachments. So you can have the, uh, the blender, the mixer, and the food processor, and the the um like the whisk attachments. Yeah, and stuff like that. So well, and really so truly having those, those little for you. tools, it does make it easier. And yeah. More fun. Yeah. To make a fun meal, you don't feel so frustrated when you're trying to make something and you're like, oh, I have to shred how many cups of cheese <laughs> by hand with the grater when you can just throw it and go and it's shredded. Yeah. You know? Um, and then you also don't have to buy the pre bagged shredded cheese that is has wood Coated chips. Coated in wood chips. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Just side note, you're eating wood chips if you buy pre shredded cheese. Yeah. Fiber. Mmm. <laughs> I call it fiber. <laughs> okay, so this week's homework is to change something in, in your, your kitchen. kitchen. It may be something as simple as dusting off your stove and using <laughs> it to cook. Or it could be finding some bins and reorganizing all your tools and figuring out what exactly you have and what you don't need. And if you have that rice maker that you never use, find someone like me that loves a pre-timed, scheduled everything and give it to them they will love it yeah and they will say thank you <laughs> they will say thank you and even if they don't use it it's out of your house yes can i yes. say that <laughs> okay let us change know change. something in your kitchen and let us know send us a post on facebook at homebod podcast um let us know in the comments below here what you're excited for what you're looking forward to find that accountability partner and share this podcast with somebody else who needs to hear it as well have a good week good luck <laughs>